Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road, of course. As requested by at least a million of my followers, I will in this video teach you how to use Garmin's Basecamp software. It's free and easy to install, just follow the link in the description. You can choose between Windows and Macintosh and then the installation process is just like any other software. If you know nothing about GPS tracks at all, I recommend that you check my previous video on this subject. The link will be here somewhere, hopefully, and also in the description. Once you download and finish the installation of Basecamp, you need to get the maps. Follow the link in the description and you will find this website. I recommend that you press the New Style option. Here you can select a country, let's try Mongolia, and then you can click download and choose between Macintosh and Windows. This will download the file that you can click and it will automatically install the maps onto your base camp. Then you just need to open the base camp, go to this option here and choose the map that you just downloaded. I have a few ones on my list already, so let's use the Portuguese map for this tutorial. The map we have just downloaded is called a generic OST map. And I'm pretty sure there are a thousand better maps out there with more details, but this one has been my bread and butter for the past 10 years. I bet it doesn't show every single possible trail in the universe, but it will show you at least 80% of them. And from my experience, the remaining few are biking trails, hiking routes and um, private roads where you should not be riding with an adventure bike anyway. Ok, enough with this boring crap, let's move on. My Portuguese map looks like this, cause I have recorded and downloaded a thousand tracks along the years, but let's create a new folder to clear that all out. Right click here on my collection, choose new folder and let's call it Basecamp Tutorial. Inside this folder we will create a list. Right click the folder and select list. Let's call it my first list. Inside the list you can put tracks and also waypoints like fuel stations, dangers on the road, bridges, any annotations and so on. Ok, now on the map we can zoom in using the mouse wheel or by clicking these arrows over here. And if you come to the 700 meter range or below, you will be able to see these dotted lines, which are the unpaved roads or dirt trails. You can right away create your own track by first selecting the list you wish to work on and then clicking here to initiate a new track. Now just click on a starting point and continue adding waypoints like this. As you can see here, you have a new track inside your list. We can right click on the track and this will open a menu with too many options. But let me explain the most important. Rename the track. I recommend that you rename all your tracks, otherwise you will end up like me, with way too many tracks you don't remember where they came from. You can also invert the direction of the track, and this one comes without explanation. You can also duplicate your track. This is much more useful than just copying the track. In Basecamp, all tracks with the same name are entangled, meaning that if you modify one of them, you will make create that same modification in all of the tracks, even if they are on other lists. When you choose to duplicate the track, Basecamp will automatically create a slightly different name, meaning that you can now safely modify this new one, this new copy, without interfering with the mother file. If you want to add this new track to another list, just create another list and then drag and drop the file into the new one. It's also possible to delete a track from the selected list. Last but not least, you can double click the tracks and this will open this menu. Inside you can see how long the track is and you can also change the color. To select tracks directly from the map, you need to press this hand symbol up here. You can also use this tool to click on the map and then drag around to move your point of view over the map. The same effect can be achieved by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Ok, and now that we know the basics, let's import some tracks into Basecamp and play with them. On a previous video, I showed you how to find and download maps using the Wikiloc website. Assuming you already have a few GPX tracks in your computer, let's drag them onto Basecamp. First, let's select the track we want to work on. 
Now we can divide this track in two by choosing the scissor button over here, or by pressing X. Notice that when you divide the track, now you have two tracks in the list, one in the original name and another one with a generic name. You can delete directly a track by selecting it and pressing delete on your keyboard. You can undo any step, even deleting tracks and other actions, by simply hitting Ctrl Z or by choosing Edit and then Undo, like any other software. And now let's erase some waypoints using the Erase tool. Click up here in this rubber symbol or press E. You can click or delete a waypoint or click and drag and erase a series of them. You can also insert new track waypoints by pressing this symbol over here or by hitting I on your keyboard. You can move track waypoints with this option over here or by pressing M. And finally, you can also join two tracks by holding Shift and then selecting both tracks at the same time. Ok, now you can release the Shift, right click on any of the two tracks and choose the option Join Selected Tracks. A window will pop up asking you which track comes first. If you choose correctly, Basecamp will create a short connection between your tracks. If you choose wrong, it connects the wrong extremities and it sucks. You can also create special waypoints by pressing here and then adding them somewhere on the map. Last thing I want to teach you is how to export the tracks. You can export a single track by selecting it, going to File and choose Export Selection. Or you can export the whole list, which includes all the tracks and special waypoints inside the list. The exported file will be a GPX, compatible with any GPS devices, phones or GPS software worth its salt. As you may have noticed, we didn't even scratch the surface of all the trillion billion gazillion features and options and buttons that Basecamp has. But I have been using this software for like 15 years and I never used any of those extra features, so chances are you won't either. If this video was useful to you in any way, please like. Also consider subscribing, hitting the bell button and checking my other videos. Most of them are about my adventures off-road and my trips with friends, but some others are just as informative as this one. Anyway, see you guys next week.